Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Faith Fellowship United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Dave Arruda, and welcome to a special message this morning. I get to put on two hats today. I get to put on two hats today, I'm sorry. And... Um, one of those hats is uh, I get to be pastor of Faith Fellowship United Methodist Church. And the other one is the one I get to use uh, often, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, but I usually don't get to do it from this place, from Faith Fellowship United Methodist Church. And that is my position as the international pastoral director for Orphan Sunday, Stand Sunday with Christian Alliance for Orphans. And I have got the honor that I wasn't planning on doing this, but I have got the honor that I'm going to be unofficially launching the campaign for 2020 for Orphan Sunday, Stand Sunday this morning as part of my message. And we officially launch it tomorrow. Uh, and so I just want to thank Jody Jackson Tucker our international director and longtime friend and great person to work with, and our whole entire team, that allowing me to have this, this honor and privilege to, to be the voice for these children, both here in the United States and around the world. And so I would really um, like everyone to join, share this message, get it out, be part of what we're trying to do. I'll explain what our program's gonna be like uh, as part of the message. But um, let's start today with uh, some prayer. So let's go uh, and be in a place of prayer. Dear Lord Father, thank you for this opportunity to come to you and to reach out throughout the world to share the good news of your son, Jesus, and also to be able to be humbled and, and have the privilege to also share about the children, the, the least of these, the ones without the voice, the ones that we forget, both here in the United States in our foster care system and also in the world as orphans. And so, Lord, I thank you that we're able to do that today from this small place that we can give out big words to change lives. And we know that this time has been dark and crazy, that 2020 has started off rough and hard, However, through these times, we are coming closer to you. We are leaning into you through your son, Jesus. And as we lean in, Lord, today, let us be in remembrance of the gifts you've given us, the beauty that you place in our lives, the simple miracles. Let us see you. Let us hear you. Let us feel you in our lives. And let this be an opportunity of thanking you and praising you and be in practice for when all we do in eternity is to worship and honor and praise you. So let's raise a hallelujah. Let's raise an amen. And let's be in a place of worship. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And we'll give you Caroline to sing some songs. And please join in.
spoke a word you were singing over me you have been so so good to me before I took a breath you breathed your life in me you have been so so
enough to make There's no shadow you won't light up Mountain you won't climb up Come enough to me There's no wall you won't kick down Why you won't tear down Come enough to me There's no shadow you won't light up Mountain you won't climb up Come enough to me
Okay, now we have a special song. It's our anthem for today. And, and Caroline um, uh, was able to, um, to do this very quickly for, for, for me, and I thank her. She put some extra effort into it. And so our anthem today is Be a Light. When you do somebody wrong, make it right. Oh, don't hide in the dark. You were born to shine in a world full of hate. light. The race that you can live. In a world full of hate, be light. When you do somebody wrong, just make it right. Don't hide in the dark, you were born to shine. In a world full of hate, be light. Yeah, it's hard to live in color when you just see just black and white. Thank you, Caroline. What a blessing that was. Thank you so much. And so as we continue this special worship and time together to celebrate not only our time to thank God for, for all that he's done this week, but also to, to be part of the Often Sunday, Stand, Stand Sunday launch is, is just a, a blessing, and I, I just want to ask you to invite people in, share it. Uh, I know that there are folks uh, that are uh, literally coming in from around the world, and, and I want to, to uh, welcome you and, and have you with us here in uh, the U.S. Uh, as we are, are doing some, some worshiping. And please worship together. Uh, this is the time that we go to what we call God moments. And those God moments are those things that we want to uh, celebrate, that we have seen God in our life, whether it be a small thing or a big thing, whether that we, um, 
where we have asked God, um, uh, excuse me, that, that we have asked God to uh, engage in our lives or, or we uh, have, God has showed up in, in a, a phone call or a text message or, or a chance to, um, uh, to, to have a smiling moment or a time that we could give a smiling moment to someone. If you have a God moment, um, uh, then, we, um, then we ask you to either email it to us uh, at our email address, uh, or we, you can um, uh, message us uh, on the um, Facebook or put it in the comments, and we'll try to get to it today. And if not, we will get to it uh, next week. And you can mail in your uh, prayer requests on little pieces of paper, and we'll put it on our put it in our prayer wall. Uh, and we will pray over them as well. So there's many ways that you can share God. So I ask you to, to take a time, and as I read a few of the, uh, of the uh, God moments that have, have uh, come, um, come up these days uh, in, in the past week or so, and I'll be happy to, um, uh, to share. And so, um, again, we want to, for the United States, I uh, hope everybody had a blessed and happy uh, Independence Day. Want to pray for Western and Southern uh, United States uh, as their numbers from the, the COVID virus peaks. Um, Dan R., uh, dad passed away from uh, COVID. We had a family friend pass away, uh, Louise, um, uh, asking for help and healing and settling in. Uh, Allison for healing, Cheryl and family healing. Haifa's uh, mom healing. Uh, Kate's mom. Lauren B's friend Steve is hospitalized. Brian M's sister passed away. Healing for Brian and Caroline and family. Ann M continue healing. Mike M, healing and medical um, direction. Ellen has been hospitalized, and we pray for her. Debbie J's friend Janet uh, had a fall. Joan L is asking, continue to ask for healing and recovery on a hand injury. Um, Collis's sister Celeste uh, has some leg issues, medical issues. Melanie B, uh, son, had knee surgery. Danielle, uh, workload, Reverend Megan and Bishop Devadar, as they are dealing with all of the challenges of, of new districts and new beginnings in our New England conference. And as things have slowly been opening up in the conference office, uh, continue to pray for our government officials uh, as they try to work through all of the challenges. Pray. Uh, for continued peaceful and positive change through protest and awareness. Pray for all of our coordinators around the world for Orphan and Stand Sunday. Pray for our children in foster care and in orphanages and in care by others. Our first responders, our doctors, our nurses, our firefighters, all of the people that are essential, some of the people that are that we have overlooked for years, the, the maids and the janitors and hotels and stuff and, and, and the, the, the workers in stores, let's hold them up in prayer because we've learned that in a time of need, they are essential. All work is trying to work on a cure or a vaccine for, for the COVID. And I ask for continued prayer as everyone is, is working on trying to adjust to all of this challenging times. And I ask for your strength and your wisdom on social distancing, wearing masks, no matter where you are. We had a few updates. Um, Roseanne's cousin, uh, Stephen, is improving. Dr. Ashley D. and Michael uh, got engaged. Uh, congratulations to Adam um, and partner for the birth and adoption of their son. Uh, our 
uh, church family, uh, grateful for uplifting moments during the pandemic, our church leadership, um, uh, Caroline uh, is uh, grateful for energy and enthusiasm. Uh, we are grateful for our teams that work on our ministries and show up every week, and we are blessed by them. And Robin is... Um, uh, it was a blessing to have Robin sharing her artwork with us uh, this week as she came in to help us do ministry. And so if you have a God moment, if you have something that you want to share, then I, I'd love for you to, to send it to either our email or mail it into us, and, and those addresses will be up, or put it into your comments. And then... I want you to take a moment to think about for a moment of quietness in your life today, this morning, as we as we get ready to, to pray. I want you to I want you to think about how simple it is for you to make a difference in someone's life. Think about the time when you just made someone smile. Think about the time when, when someone said thank you and it wasn't just because they were saying the words but because they absolutely meant it. I want you to think about how much effort or how much struggle or, or what it cost you to have that little tiny moment that you made a difference in someone's life that you knew you really made a difference in their life. Take a moment to think about that and to pray and ask God through his grace and his power, through the love and blood of Jesus Christ, that you, you can do it again and that you can see the opportunities to do it over and over again. Take a moment. Dear Lord, let us pray. Lord, we have asked you to hear our cries, to hear our joys, to, to be with us. So today, as we are, are stepping out into the world, as we are reaching people around the world, Lord, we ask you to hear our voice even louder this morning. Let our voices raise up, because as we raise our voices, we can change the world. As we raise our voices, we can make a difference in people's lives. As we raise our voices, we can make an impact on the injustice. And it's easy to do. We can make differences. So, Lord, I ask you today through our times of our quietness and our vocalness, let our voices scream out to the world. Let us be that trumpet. Let us be the crier on the mountain telling the world that God is alive, that God is living within us, that we are servants of the Lord, that we believe in his son Jesus, and we share in his love and his compassion and his mercy and grace. So Lord, I ask at this time that you hear us, 
that you place a hand over us and a hand beneath us. One to shelter us from the storm and one to carry us. And Lord, while we are in your hand and below your hand, let us take our hands and reach up with one to praise you and to reach out with the other to a brother and sister. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now it is time for our tithes, offering, and gifts. And if you'd like to help us here at Faith Fellowship, you can contribute by going online to our website or you can mail us in a contribution uh, if you are a regular attendee or, or mission partner with us. Please, we ask you to continue to send in your tithes, offering, and gifts so we can do the work that we need to do and that the work that God has called us to do, that somehow we just continue to do it. So at this time, I will ask you to offer up the best gift you can, and that is yourself. And let's sing a little bit of, of Mac Powell uh, chorus from Offering. This is my offering, dear Lord. This is my offering to you, God. Well, I will give you my life, for it's all I have to give, because you gave your life for me. This is my my offering to you, God. Well, I will give you my life, for it's all I have to give, because you gave your life for me. And let's pray. <clears throat> Dear Lord Father, thank you for these tithes offering gifts. May you do what you do all the time and you multiply them like you do the loaves and the fish. That somehow the little that we, we give and we receive has all, gets to do so much and reach so many people, not only in our community and in our state and in our region and in our country, but around the world. And we thank you for that. And Lord, I ask that you also bless the voices that were raised and as people were giving the best offering they can give you, and that is themselves. And Lord, I also ask that you bless what we've kept. And that no matter what we have, no matter what we've kept, whether it be our car, our home, our income, that that too can be used to glorify your son Jesus in the world. That someone will see his love, his grace, and his mercy how, because how we live and how we act and, and what we have because you've blessed us. I ask this in Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> and so, I also want to bring you to a time of our children's time and our chaplain, Roseanne Driscoll. And Roseanne Driscoll, it's already on our, our, our page, on our Facebook pages, my Facebook page, the church's Facebook page, Check out Roseanne's message. Roseanne is a fantastic children's teacher. And no matter if you have children at home or not, she is a wonderful teacher. And she will reach every child, no matter if you are 9 or 90. And so I thank her. And she is such a blessing to our ministry here at Faith Fellowship and a personal blessing to me and my ministry. And so I want to encourage to for, to encourage you to, to watch it and comment and, and let her know what you think and let her know how many kids are watching with you. Um, and so uh, thank you, Roseanne, for your, your children's message today. And now, and now our message title today is Let's be the light. Let's be the light 
to the world. And so, we have over the past few weeks have been talking about the Matthew scripture where Jesus is, is conditioning and sending out his disciples to do the work. In Matthew 28, 18, Jesus comes and says to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am always with you to the end of the ages. And then we hear that, that Jesus is, is with his disciples and he's, he's in Matthew 9 and, and he tells the disciples that when he, saw the, when he saw the crowd, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. And then in Matthew 10, Jesus is, is talking to the disciples and, and, and letting them know that whoever does not take up a cross and follow him is not worthy of him. Those who find their life will lose it and those who lose it for the, lose their lives for his sake will find it. And then he finishes and he adds one more thing that we had been talking about. He, he adds this in Matthew 10. And whoever gives even a cup of water to one of the least little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will, be, will lose their reward. And so today we want to talk about Another scripture, another Matthew scripture, Matthew scripture 516, where Jesus says, in the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Let your light shine. What did Jesus mean by letting your light shine? Well, let's go back. He meant by living out the commandments that he gave, going out and shepherding the world, having compassion for those that are harassed and helpless. This is what Orphan Sunday and Stand Sunday is about. It's about those shepherds, uh, about those sheep that don't have shepherds. It's about those voices that don't aren't heard. It's about the hunger of not in the stomach but in the soul of these children around the world. This is not something that happens just on the other side of the world. This happens here. And this is why we have Stand Sunday. Stand Sunday, Bishop Blake many years ago said that he wanted his congregation to stand with him for foster children. Pastor Billy, in Zambia, many years ago, asked his congregation to step up on one day, on a Sunday, to stand up for the orphans because his village had so many orphans from the AIDS epidemic. And so today we have Orphan Sunday and Stand Sunday because these two men, almost at the same time, on other sides of the world, listened to what God put in his heart, in their hearts. And another man, Gary Schneider, that heard the message from Pastor Billy brought Orphan Sunday to the United States. And so this year, our theme is be the light. 
be the light of Christ to the world. But more importantly, be, a, be the light of Christ to these children. Now these children come from many different places. Some come from affluent white communities here in the United States. Some come from poor inner city communities mixed with race and poverty. Some come from places on the other side of the world in Africa, in the Philippines, in Europe, in Russia, in Ukraine. In every country, we can find the orphan. We can find the child that is being harassed and then helpless. The child that is being put up for sale or abused. The child that has special needs and is thrown away. Stand Sunday, Orphan Sunday, Christian Alliance for Orphan, and all of its members and its churches that are involved have answered the call from God to care for the least of these. As in Matthew 10, to give a cup of water to the least of the little one. And you'll have a reward. That reward is not in dollars and cents. It's not a big home. It's not a car. It's not a good job. It will be a reward because you will have the reward of seeing a smile on a child's face. You will have a reward to see that for a moment another human being got to feel the love of Christ. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about the simplest things that you can do to be the light. You can go to our maps on Christian Alliance for Orphan.org, CAFO.org. And you can see the map, and you can help light up the map. See, often Sunday for a number of years in the United States was about churches getting together and, and praying on this day. One day, one purpose, one voice. But this year it's a little different. A lot of churches still aren't gathering. A lot of churches can't have big gatherings. And so... Let's do it by one person at a time. Be the light. Be the light. Go to the map. Put your name in. Put the city you're in. And say you're willing to pray. Whether it be on for Often Sunday, Stand Sunday. And you can also pray. Back in 2017, I believe... I had the honor with Jody Jackson Tucker to, to start the initial conversation with the Hebrew community on starting off in Shabbat. And now we have representation and people praying for orphans also in Jerusalem, in Israel. It's wonderful. We have crossed over lines that people said that we could not cross over. And so this year, we want people to be the light, to be that light in your community. There are many resources that you can get on our page on how you individually can do something, how you can do something to help someone in foster care, how you can do something to help in orphan care, in adoption. There are many things that can be done across the world that only takes one person to do it. 
I was sent a, a video this week by a, uh, by a friend, Amy. Um, actually, she sent it to me yesterday. And I, was, uh, I told her that it was incredible. Beatrice Berry, uh, you can look her up on Facebook. She has a video that she talks about always clean the light. Always clean the light, she says. As, she, as a young girl, she did cleaning to earn money. It helped her get through school, through high school and college and sometimes graduate school, she said. And when she was waiting for the bus, there was other ladies that were, that were also going to and from their cleaning jobs. And she would ask, being the young girl, she would ask for their advice. And finally, one day, this one lady had called her over and told her to do one thing and one thing only, clean the light. Make sure you clean the light. There's that light that when you walk into the house, the chandelier that nobody ever cleans because it's too high and too difficult. But climb up and clean the light. And make sure you wipe off the light bulb. Because when you clean the light, the light shines brighter, makes everything sparkle, and all of the other work that you have done looks even better. So as we are trying to be the light, we need to clean our lights. We need to make sure our lights are good. We need to make sure our relationship with Jesus is good enough that when we step out into the world, that we shine so bright that everything is seen. That all of the goodness that's around us starts to show up. We need to walk into the world with a bright smile on our face. A brilliant light of hope beaming from our eyes. Because we have that hope. Jesus tells us that all of the power in heaven is given to us. That the very power that raised him from the grave lives in us. If we have asked Jesus to be our Lord and Savior and the Holy Spirit has come into us, then we are powerful enough to not only light the light of one child, but to light the world. I ask you today, as often Sunday, stand Sunday, Shabbat, often Shabbat gets kicked off this year, that you reach out into your community and make a difference for these children, for these young people. That are making a difference because they're doing the simplest of things. Make a difference in their lives because they need it. They need the help. They need the guidance. They need the support. But mostly, they need the hope. The hope to know that someone cares. We know that hope. We know what hope is because someone cared enough to spread their arms on a cross and die for us. Let us do that. Let us pick up our cross. Let us shine the light. Let us turn on the light in someone's life by simply doing the simplest of things. I am proud to work with our neighbors next door at Patriot Subaru, who their simple way of doing things is they have a display of, of the foster children, or some of the foster children in both in Massachusetts and Rhode Island that are ready to be adopted. And they're displayed in their showroom so people come in and out and get to hear the story about a woman that walked in to buy a car 
and was so pleased to see the pictures because she was the photographer that took the pictures and knew that her work, her effort, was making a difference. Behind me, you can see some of the photographs from this 30-foot banner of some of our coordinators from around the world and some of the people that started off in Sunday and stand Sunday and off in Shabbat. There's friends that you can see. My friend Alex Sam from, from India and Gary Snyder's up there and, and Jen Gash and Pastor Billy. There's people there from, from Maine to Florida, from Oregon to Texas. from St. Petersburg, Russia, to Ukraine, to the Philippines. I have the honor and privilege to work with these people, to hear their stories, to share how their lights continue to shine. And now I'm asking you, go to a website, light up a map, Make a difference. Change the world. It's easy. All you got to do is turn on the light. Turn on the light of Christ in your life and let it shine to everyone, to the children, to the old, to the downtrodden, to the ones that have forgotten, to the ones that have lost their voice. Let's stand up for each other. Not because of our, our creed, our religion, our race, our sexuality, or anything else, but let's do so because we are human beings and we are made in God's image. We are God's children and God loves us all because he sent his son to die for each and every one of us. Let's put it all on the line here. Let's make a difference not only in the life of a child, but in the life of the world by lighting up a light. Be the light. Light it up. Thank you. And let's say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so as we always say here, as we're getting ready to leave this time of worship, let us remember that we are the only Bible that someone will see. We are the only word of God that someone will hear. And we are the only light of Christ that can brighten someone's dark day. It's cheap. It's easy to do. Be the light. Go out and make a change in the world for the name of Jesus Christ. And so let's go in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, standing on that everlasting rock of Jesus Christ. So rock on and amen. Thank you and God bless. And remember to go to uh, Christian Alliance for Often, CAFO.org, Often Sunday, sign up, be the light, and thank you. And to my sister Jody, thank you for the opportunity and the privilege. I am humbly in your debt for being able to do this. Thank you and God bless. Amen.